Hey everyone, with opening day tomorrow, today I'm going to be breaking down all of the position players that have made the Red Sox opening day roster. And just a little bit of a spoiler before we get into this, I am way more optimistic than I expected to be. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first player we're going to talk about is Connor Wong. Last season, Connor Wong played in 126 games and had 403 played appearances, which amounted to a 235 batting average and just a 385 slugging percentage. This would give him a weighted runs created plus of just 78 and a fan graphs war of 0.5. Overall, Wong was kind of just a replacement player last season, but if you were actually watching the games, it kind of felt like he was a lot better than that, at least in my opinion. Looking at his baseball savant page, there's really not a whole lot that's encouraging here. He does make good barrel contact, and his exit velocity is kind of almost average, but these aren't really translating into any results so far. Next season, Fangraphs is projecting him to be worth only 0.4 war, but he's going to be playing in only 81 games according to their projections, so it's a slight uptick. Based on what I've seen in spring training and what I saw from him last season, I do think he's going to get a little bit of an increase in production this year. Wong is one of those guys that I think if he gets enough at-bats this next season, he could run into, you know, 10, 15. 18, maybe even push 20 home runs. But to be perfectly honest, he's probably more likely going to be more like an average replacement level catcher at best. Next up, we have Reese McGuire. Reese McGuire will likely be Connor Wong's backup catcher for most of the season. And if you look at what he's done since he's been in the Red Sox uniform, he's actually not done too bad. His 2022 season, he batted 337 for the Red Sox in 36 games. And last year, he batted 267, which is actually really good for a catcher. Defensively, Reese kind of grades out to be an average catcher, very similar to Connor Wong. McGuire has shown the ability to hit for a decent average, but he's basically got no pop behind the bat. But to be perfectly honest, Reese may not even be on the roster this time next year, as the Red Sox are likely hoping that top prospect Kyle Teal can hopefully take over that starting to backup catcher role and be a tandem with Connor Wong. Overall, I think it's more likely that Reese might take a little bit of a step back this next year than actually develop forward, but who knows, we'll see how it goes. Next up, we're going to be talking about Tristan Casas. Last season, Casas had maybe one of the best rookie seasons in recent memory for the Red Sox. He hit 24 home runs and had a 263 batting average with a 129 weighted runs created plus. Casas also walked 70 times this last year, which helped lead him to a 367 on base percentage and pushed him all the way up to third place in rookie of the year voting. Fangraphs is essentially projecting him to do exactly what he did last season, just with a few more games played, which helps increase his counting stats. I put Casas on one of the five players that I expect to break out this next season, and I think this next season he hits 30 home runs and draws 100 walks. That that is my bold prediction for Casas for next season, and I think he's totally within the realm of possibility for him to do it. I know the Red Sox have had extension talks with Casas, but I really, really hope they get this done early in the season because I think if you wait another year or two, it's going to be too late and he's going to be really expensive. Tristan Casas will be one of the best offensive players in baseball next season. I count on it. Next up, we're going to be talking about Emmanuel Valdez. Last season, if you were watching Red Sox games, Valdez came up and he filled in for a good portion of the season as the starting second baseman, and you know, he did okay. He hit six home runs, had a two 266 batting average, was a little over league average offensively. Valdez has genuinely one of the worst arms in baseball, which is okay because he's playing second base, but overall he was a defensive liability last year that hurt the Red Sox. Now his bat on the other hand, his bat is something we can work with. If you guys have been watching Valdez at all this spring, he has been hitting absolute tanks. This spring training, Valdez hit four home runs, and if you watched how far any of these would go, you'd be pretty excited for this next year for him. Fangraphs isn't expecting him to be a regular everyday starter this year, and I don't think he will be either. But with Von Grissom being down early in the season with injury, I would expect him and Pablo Reyes will kind of platoon to start the year. Valdez is kind of interesting though, because if you were to tell me by the end of the season that he was the starting second baseman, it wouldn't surprise me that much. But if he's going to do it, he needs to be able to hit, and his defense needs to be able to improve. There is a reality where Valdez goes and plays 100, 120 games and gets you 20 home runs this season. I'm not sure if that's what actually happens, but I could totally see it happening at least somewhere in the universe. More realistically though, he's probably going to be another backup platoon type guy throughout the year, and I hope that he takes another step forward this year because he's a really nice bat to have off the bench and in AAA as depth. Next up, we're going to be talking about Trevor Story. Trevor Story, I think we all understand he hasn't been healthy, he has not produced when he's been with the Red Sox really outside of that one month in 2022, but the guy's a baller. He is good defensively, and he's going to be really good this next year. Story is another one of those guys that I have the five players that I like for this year video, and I'm calling my shot again on a stat line. I think if he gives you 130 games, he's going 20-20 this year. If he can give you 130 healthy games, 140 games maybe, he is going 20 home runs and 20 stolen bases. That is my bold prediction for Trevor Story. Story's probably not going to give you a whole lot of batting average, even though he batted like 380 this spring training. But he's going to steal you some bases, he's going to hit some home runs, and he's going to play great defense. If you look up at the end of the season and you told me that Trevor Story was four wins above replacement, 
replacement would not surprise me at all. I think Trevor Story has the potential to be an all-star again in a Red Sox uniform, and I think he could be before this contract is done. For third base, we're gonna be talking about Rafael Devers. Rafael Devers in 2023 basically had another Rafael Devers type season. He hit 33 home runs, had 100 RBI, and placed 18th in MVP votes, winning a silver slugger. It's kind of crazy though, because when you really think about the season, it was kind of a down year for him offensively. He only batted 271. His career batting average is 280. His OPS was kind of around career norms, but he only had a 126 OPS plus last season when he's had a 134 or higher the previous two seasons. If the Red Sox are going to have a shot this year, they need Rafael Devers to be Rafael Devers and maybe even a little bit more. I don't know if this is the year that he's going to take that next step forward, but hopefully a healthy Trevor Story will actually provide some protection in the lineup and maybe get him to that next level that we all know he can. There is a 40 home run bat within Rafael Devers. He has hit 38 before. I think he's going to hit 40 potentially multiple times before he retires. Even though he's been doing amazing in spring training, I really just don't know if this is going to be that year that he takes that leap into being that true MVP candidate, or if it's going to have to wait another year or two for more players to develop and for him to get true protection in the lineup. The Red Sox likely designated here this next season is going to be Masataka Yoshida. Yoshida had a really good first season with the Red Sox last year. He just cooled off in the second half because I think he was exhausted. Yoshida played in the World Baseball Classic and he played a full MLB season for the first time ever. That's another like 25 games and they play in the MPB. So this guy last year tacked on like an extra two months of baseball plus an extra 40 games of baseball. This, this is just a lot for somebody to handle in any given season. Even outside of all of this, Yoshida still exceeded my expectations, honestly. He batted 289 and for most most of the year he was batting over 300 and he was 9% better in weighted runs created plus according to fan graphs. Now heading into us acquiring him, the biggest knock on him was his defense and I gotta say his defense was as advertised and I don't mean that in a good way. Yoshida's defense was just about as bad as anybody could have expected. So for this next season it's no surprise that he's probably just going to be our designated hitter. Now hopefully with Yoshida being out of left field and just as a hitter in our lineup that's going to help him not only stay on the field a little bit more but provide more offensively. Fan graphs is projecting him to hit 17 home runs and kind of just increase his stats as take marginally overall, and that's essentially what I would expect from him. Yoshida is also just one of those guys where I would not surprise me if he had one of those blow-up type years where he bats like 320 with 25 home runs. But is that going to be this year or is that ever going to happen? Who knows? Overall though, I think as long as he's on the field, he's going to be one of the best designated hitters in all of baseball. Next up, we're moving on into the outfield and we're going to be talking about Jaron Duran. Duran had like one of those true breakout type seasons last year. He batted 295 with a 482 slugging percentage, was worth 2.4 war and only like two thirds of the season. If you guys have seen the most popular video on my channel, Duran is just a menace on the bases. He turns those singles into doubles every chance he possibly can get. And as an opposing pitcher, he's just not somebody you want to deal with when they get on base. Duran's also one of those guys that's just absolutely jacked, so it wouldn't surprise me if his power numbers potentially went up. I do think we see some regression from Duran this next season, but I don't think we're going to see as much as some other people think. And the reason for that is just purely how aggressive he is when he does make contact with the ball. Duran is one of those guys that I think moving forward is just going to outperform his expected metrics. Moving through the outfield, we've got Tyler O'Neill next. Tyler O'Neill is probably the sneakiest pickup the Red Sox had this last offseason. For those of you that don't know, Tyler O'Neill back in 2021 had 34 home runs, 15 stolen bases and finished top 10 in the MVP voting. Over the last couple seasons, he's just not been that healthy, but I think that there is still a really good player within Tyler O'Neill. This spring training, he's done really well offensively and defensively, it is striking to notice the difference between him and what we had with Yoshida last year. Overall, Fangraphs is really aggressive with their projections on him this next year, and I think he's going to hit 24 home runs with a 113 weighted runs created plus, giving you 2.4 war. I was trying to think of an optimistic expectation for him heading into this season, and this is kind of what I was thinking, and I'm generally a more optimistic type person. I think if Tyler O'Neill does give you this slash line heading into this next season, you're going to be very happy with it as a Red Sox fan. Next up, we've got Willie Abreu. Abreu definitely impressed me last season, and I think a lot of other Red Sox fans can agree. With his first major league call-up last year, he hit 316 with an 862 OPS and had a couple home runs. What was most striking to me about Abreu last season is just how ridiculously hard he was hitting the ball. If you look at his baseball savant page, he hasn't had enough at bats to qualify yet, but all of this is just in red. That is super encouraging from a very young player in their first taste of big league action. During this offseason, I was definitely thinking that there's a timeline somewhere where Abreu goes into this season and he hits 20 home runs and he becomes the everyday starting right fielder. Now that we've gone through spring training though, I don't think that that line is clear cut for him as we have Rafaela, Duran, and O'Neal fairly solidified in the outfield. What I do think he's going to provide is a really good option off the bench. I think he's going to give you between 200, 250 at bats hopefully, and maybe heading into next season he's going to be able to be one of those guys that can compete for a starting job. I know a lot of you guys don't have a great opinion of Heim Bloom, 
but the deal getting Abreu back with Valdez in exchange for Christian Vasquez was just chef's kiss. I'm really excited to see what we get out of Abreu this next year. To round out the outfield, we've got Sedan Rafaela. Rafaela has done basically everything you could have asked him to do this offseason and through spring training. Defensively, you already know what you got. Rafaela is a world-class outfielder. He is an amazing defender, and he is the type of guy that if he is in the starting lineup regularly for years to come, he's probably going to be a multiple gold glove winner. Last year in limited action, though, Rafaela definitely showed some holes as a big league hitter. He basically just couldn't stop swinging at pitches. Now, the most encouraging thing with Rafaela, though, is even last season, when he wasn't swinging and missing. If he did make contact with the ball, he was hitting it where he needed to hit it on the mat. Heading into spring training though this year, he looks like almost a completely different hitter. Rafaela finished spring training this year hitting four home runs if you count the one that he hit in the breakout game. He stole five bases, his contact rate was up, his defense was amazing. If he can work in a few more walks in there and have slightly better decision making this year, there is a world where Rafaela develops into like a Mookie Betts light type player. I know that comp is strong, I understand it, but I I've talked about it on this channel before, Rafaela's swing, his decision making, and how he approaches the ball is very similar to Mookie Betts in a lot of ways. Now, does that mean I expect him to become a top five player in baseball? Absolutely not. But could he give you a similar type season to what Mookie Betts did in 2015 moving forward? Yeah, I think that this is a totally plausible line for him to be able to do. I'm really excited to see what we get out of Rafaela this season. He was also on the five players that I like video. And conventionally, he's not a player I put on there, but it's just too hard to ignore what we saw in spring training. Moving down the bench again, we've got Pablo Reyes. If you watch Pablo Reyes play last season, he did significantly better than I think any Red Sox fan expected. Reyes came to the Red Sox last season with a 238 career batting average and a 79 OPS plus, putting him 21% worse than the league average hitter over his career. But last season, Reyes was actually a perfectly serviceable bench player. He hit 287 with just two home runs. One of those was a walk-off grand slam, though. It definitely felt like he made his hits count, and he was very sure-handed defensively as well. But heading into this next season, I do see some regression for him. Honestly, Reyes is one of those guys that I feel like is probably going to be cut from the roster at some point this season to make way for guys like Nick York and Marcelo Mayer. Not to say that I haven't appreciated what he did for the Red Sox last year, I just don't think the level of production he's going to be able to provide this year is going to make it on the big league roster. And to round out this list, we've got Bobby Dalton. Oh my sweet summer child, I think it is the end for Bobby Dahlbeck. Dahlbeck has done a really good job of trying to make himself versatile for the Red Sox lineup. He can essentially play all four infield positions at this point. From what I understand, he's got some practice in the outfield as well. Dahlbeck has another year of options, so it's almost guaranteed that he's going to spend some time at the minors this year. Honestly, if I were to guess, I think that this is probably the last year he's going to be with the Red Sox organization. As much as I appreciate all the hard work Dahlbeck has done for the Red Sox and what he's put in to develop himself into an option as a bench player, I just think this is the last year we're going to see him in a Red Sox uniform. Anyway guys, that is today's video. I will be making another video breaking down the pitchers that have made the opening day roster later this week. Unfortunately, I won't be able to get that out before opening day just because I'm going to opening day with my wife and my mom, which I'll also likely make some content for. Anyway, I appreciate all the support that you guys have given this channel. I look forward to making some more stuff as we head into the year, and I'll see you next time. Bye.